after hearing so much about One Piece I started reading the manga earlier this week and I'm really impressed. I'm just now starting the Summit War arc. Nice, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It really is very good. I genuinely think that it's unfair to put One Piece in the same line as like Bleach and DBZ and Naruto because it's objectively better than all of them. The art style always weirds me out about One Piece. I feel like it's one of those trippy fever noodle dream artwork pieces from the 70s. It took me a while to get used to it too, but man, once I really started getting into it, it really became an asset for the style. When it finally comes out, do you think Netflix's live action adaptation of One Piece will be any good? Nope. Zero shot. Th that, uh, that show franchise cannot be done in live action. Absolutely not. It is literally a Toon Logic show. It would be like doing a live action of fucking Looney Tunes. Who Killed Roger Rabbit is one of the rare examples of cartoon ro logic working in live action. Yeah, but that, I don't think, that that works for like comedy, but that can't really work for action beats, I don't think. In, in, it's very much stylized to that show. I don't think you could get results like that in like, with Luffy punching people. Um, Treeman42, I don't watch the One Piece, um, anime. I read the manga. I think the manga's a lot better. I think it's better paced. I think it allows them to convey power a lot better. Vosh, how can One Piece show power when it has no demons? There are, wait, there are demons. They never explained why the fuck the warden for Impel Down looked like that. That dude's totally a demon. Hey, and Nico is also a demon child. I feel like One Piece has the weakest characters out of the three DBZ, Bleach, Naruto. Like Luffy is not a better character than Ichigo, Goku, or Naruto. Um, so, no, 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 no. I'm not even getting, just unimaginably stupid. Unimaginably stupid and wrong. Dude, fucking Luffy waiting for Sanji at um Big Mom's Cake Island was more of a character moment than Naruto ever got in the entire fucking series, okay? And I don't want to hear about this. Naruto's trash. Naruto's not trash, I just think it's like a 6.5 out of 10. DBZ is unironically mid. Um, it, it is. I have, I have, I read all of Dragon Ball Z. It's, it's just, and Dragon Ball. A lot of it is just like corporate schlock that the mangaka was forced to write out because it was so popular. There's no drive. There's no like heart. Yeah, the Boo arc uh, sucked too. Yeah, but none of it was great. Parts of Naruto were great. One Piece is consistently great, like all the time. One Piece is great all the way is through. Is Goku an example of positive masculinity? Um, nah, he keeps abandoning his kid. I refer to the abridged jokes, quote unquote jokes. So the cell arc was trash. Um, the cell arc was fine. The, the cell arc was marginally better than the Frieza arc, um, but much better than the Boo arc. And I tried reading Dragon Ball Super and it was immediately garbage. It was literally like one guy shows up and he's like, I fear the Super Saiyan God. And then a text panel popped up and it was like, um, they figured out Super Saiyan God meant they needed six Super Saiyans and they had six of them right here and one of them was pregnant. So it was Consumer five plus tip. one pregnant. Everyone knows Vegeta as peak masculinity. True. Have you seen porn of Cell fucking Android 17? Why would I ever? The only porn that I would ever look at is, uh, uh, Android 17 fucking, um, the short guy. What's his fucking name? K-something? Krillin. That's it, because I believe in true love. The One Piece The One Piece as RL. Can we get much higher? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Or Android 18. Can we 18. get much higher? Ah, uh, ah, uh, A. Not 17, not the cowboy, okay? 18. Yeah, true. Or whatever. Android 18. With Krillin. I do respect the fact that Bulma stayed a whore the entire series and just got older and older and never stopped. I respect that. I un I respect Bulma so much. Bulma is unironically the single best character in Dragon Ball. Like, no contest. One arc was long. Um, I do think Wano arc got a bit overly long, but I still really enjoyed it. How is Bulma a whore? Dude, Bulma wants to get fucking tag teamed by every goddamn sa- Dude, absolutely. Bulma's out here. Bulma's- Bul Bulma wants her fucking womb to be a Saiyan um, breeding factory, okay? And I respect it. Bulma's written in quite a misogynistic way, especially in early Dragon Ball. Yeah, and I'm rejecting the misogyny to appreciate her character anyway. Chi-Chi was waste of potential. True. Bulma's literally the most characterized of all female shonen protagonists. Yeah, like, there's... The, 
a bunch of misogynistic shit does happen with her and with the story, but I still think she's a great character, you know, like, in spite of all that. Please watch Bleach. But it, it, doesn't Bleach suck? It has hot girls with big boobies. Oh, Color Me sold. Doesn't she have Vegeta's kid? Yeah. Which, by the way, I respect the hell out of, because they characterize Vegeta as nothing but a bitter asshole. And then there's a time skip. And she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you'll, like, yeah. <laughs> hey, guess what? Guess where Trunks comes from. Yeah, pink shirt Vegeta, exactly. It really just goes to show that if you're, um, even if you're very short, you can still get mad pussy. All you have to do is be extremely evil and very confident. Of course the Cell arc was the best. It gave us Android 18, a Sunere queen for our short King Krillin. The- Die angry. The two, the two, the three androids on their road trip was unironically the single best part of any part of all the Dragon Ball manga that I have read. Android's road trip better or worse than Gohan High School arc? Gohan High School arc was good. I think the uh, Android road trip was better. There's something to me, there's something, I, I, I unironically think that they did a better job with that than almost any media I've ever seen where it's like, things that are not technically human learn to be human by experiencing the world and have a change of heart that's kind of subtle to understand. You know what I mean? The, there are so many stories in anime and whatever that have tried to do that, and I genuinely believe that the android road trip does a better job than most of them. Aren't they actually cyborgs though? Yes. About to finish watching Yu Yu Hakusho tonight with my friend. So glad I finally checked it out. By far one of the best narratives on masculinity I've ever seen. Yeah, did you like the part where he stealth groped the trans woman and was like, the fact that you haven't gotten bottom surgery proves that you don't take this woman business seriously. Yu Yu Hakusho is very good, but god, that part was weird. Dog, what? That literally happens. I'm not... I'm not joking at all. Which parts of the androids are machine? I don't know. Dude, I don't know. Dude, Dragon Ball Z doesn't have world building. They had a gigantic world-famous martial arts tournaments with people flying and blowing shit up with lasers, and then apparently 20 years later, everyone forgets everything that has ever happened, and they think Hercules is the strongest man on Earth. Vegeta solos the One Piece universe. Also, YT Chat All has voted that DBZ is better than One Piece. Just facts heart. Vegeta, I... Vegeta can blow up the fucking planets. Of course he solos the fucking One Piece universe. Totally different scales. Bosh, how about more interesting Goku versus Superman debate? Who is a more positive example of healthy masculinity? Goku or Superman? It, with respect, it's a stupid question. Superman, it depends on the writers. And Goku is, first of all, not a role model. And second of all, not masculine. Goku is Goku. Goku doesn't do anything. All of Goku's interactions are, Boy, I love fighting. And, Boy, I can't wait to fight. He isn't a man, he's not a human, literally, he's a dumbass, and the only thing he thinks about is punching people hard. He has nothing, there's nothing about masculinity in him. And food too, yeah, food. He's literally just a monkey. Remember when Vegeta used to genocide entire planets for fun? Pepe. Yeah, and then they said he's actually a pure-hearted Saiyan because they need to do that fucking Saiyan God bullshit or whatever. I love how Vash's description of Goku is literally DBZ abridged's character of Goku. I read the manga, it's true! The DBZ abridged characterization of, of Goku is literally true. He's a habitually absentee father, a fucking moron, and all he cares about is food and fighting. That's it, that's true, that's not an exaggeration. They just made him funnier in the abridged. They are actually pretty true to character, like, for the most part. They, they make Krillin basically like the comedy through line and focus point character for the abridged series, which he's not in the manga, but but apart from that, like, Vegeta carries a, any non-fight scene. Um, I think my, my favorite character for like most of the buys, the, like the non-combat buy and buys, was probably Piccolo. I'm Piccolo-pilled. My favorite character is Kid Goku. Yeah, I, I really got like oversold on the quality of the series when um, Bulma meets Kid Goku and like shoots him with a gun and he's like, ow, that fucking hurts a little. I, I, I was look, I was sold on the idea that there was gonna be so much crazy shit that just didn't happen. But I, I did really enjoy like the, you know, like the, the, pro the progression of, of like people realizing that he's very extremely not normal, which Kid Goku, Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball. Bosh, are you serious? You seriously think Luffy has a more compelling story than Goku, whose race was nearly wiped out by a dictator? Yes! You're making Goku an idiot. Dude! 
do you know how bad characterization is in Dragon Ball? Fucking Usopp has the least been... realistic villain redemption arc in any show. Uh, the diamonds from Steven Universe. Got him. Fucking li liter. I would have to struggle to find any character in One Piece with less characterization than the most characterized character in Dragon Ball. The difference is insane. God. Okay, I, listen, I'm pausing fucking TTS for a second, okay? The entirety of... The entirety of the fucking, um... Nico Robin turns on them and then gets redeemed... Fuck, the, the whole, um, watership f shit, whatever. The Water 9, whatever the fuck that place is called, okay? That arc isn't just better than DBZ in terms of characterization. Nico Robin's characterization in that arc is better than the characterization of any character in essentially any shonen story ever. Uh, any Slobby, thank you. Or Enes Slobby or whatever. That, the fuck, the characterization of Nico Robin and the emotional fucking high of, of her saying she wants lip, that's greater than any other shit. There's nothing that compares. What's the least realistic villain redemption arc in any show? I actually think Vegeta was handled well, mostly because he just never changes. They just kind of accept that he's an asshole and live with it. Yeah, I have no idea. Scar from FMA? No, Scar was good. Zuko? No, Zuko was great! Least realistic villain redemption arc in any show. Man. No, I, I still think I have to go with the diamonds. I still legitimately think I have to go with that. Koala from When the Fishman's Sun Pirates Save Her Alone shows more character development than any character in Dragon Ball true. over the course of all of Dragon Ball. Literally true. Nika Robin's character arc is insanely good and a tearjerker. Genuinely one of the best characters ever written, at least in manga anime. Yeah, for sure. I fucking love Nika Robin. I, I really wish that Nico Robin got more, like, screen time and language and Have stuff. Have you watched the four kids version of One Piece and its cavalcade of puns? No. I, uh, I've only read the manga, which is excellent. I, I really wish she got more screen time. My, the, the Nico Robin bit where she, where she sees the painted dragon in the Wano arc and everyone else is like, wow, that's hideous. And she's just, her response is to think it's adorable or like her thought bubbles. The, just the idea of her having like an incredibly okay first of all why the fuck did they whitewash nico robin she used to look like this this was how she looked in the old anime and she and her childlike thoughts why the fuck does she look like this now after the time skip that's bullshit this looks better much more iconic fuck you that's for one and for two look see here's her thinking about her and luffy Riding on top of Zoro and Usopp because they don't have devil fruit powers. See? She's just smiling because she's thinking about it. She's perfect in every way, and I love her. Luffy says it, but he can't think because he has no brain. And Usopp's mad because he's always mad. And she's just smiling, thinking pleasantly of being on a little people boat. Perfect. I love she has an overactive imagination in the most gruesome, morbid way sometimes, and sometimes instead she's like that. Yeah, my, my read on that was always that Nico Robin is very smart, but because she's mega traumatized and has a stunted, like, childhood, now that she's happy with the Straw Hat crew, she allows herself to indulge occasionally in, like, childlike thinking, if that makes any sense. Like, it's an expression of the fact that she never really got to finish her childhood because she was on the run from eight. No, Luffy does have powers. The Devil Fruit means you can't swim in the water. You sink. Devil Fruit users lose their powers when they're in the water. Still, by the way, one of the best anime shonen battle powers ever because the devil fruits give basically infinite leeway with the magic you can use but given the fact that it's an ocean planet the water is an omnipresent threat that affects everyone you never scale out of it Vosh luffy falling into the water in chapter one and getting saved by shanks at the cost of his arm shows more development than all of dbz literally unironically why do people like dbz so much Part of it is because it's a common cultural touchstone that a lot of people have seen and there's some, like, a lot of memetic value in it. And a lot of it is also because it's just so fun and peppy and upbeat, really. My GF swore she'd never watch One Piece. She cried at Chopper's arc and is shipping Zoro, Sanji hard. Wait. We just finished Alabasta and she loves it. Dog, if she... If she cried at fucking, um, Chopper's arc, Nico Robin's arc, she's gonna kill herself. It's over. You have to get a new girlfriend now. Like, for preparation. She's gonna hear, I wanna live, and then she's gonna go, well, I don't, and then fucking end it all. What's with the whitewashing? Why can't we just have one piece? Literally. L dude, uh, Nico Robin looks so much better in the early anime than in the later anime. She just looks like a default black-haired white woman later on. She looked so cool with um, the bangs and the dark skin. She looks so distinct. To be fair, Robin was never darker skinned in the manga. 
Wait, wasn't she? Vegeta admitting that Goku is better than him at the end of Z is more character development than all of One Piece. <laughs> yeah, Vegeta admitting that uh, Goku is better than him it was it more character development than anything that happens in Dragon Ball Z. I'm trying to see if there are some early manga covers. I don't know. I feel like I remember quite a few times where her tone was darkened. Fuck, wait, you're actually right. In the early One Piece manga covers, which would have been some of the, like, basically the most official colored art from the show, she actually is the same skin tone as everyone else. I really think that she looks nice in her early anime character design with the darker skin, but I guess this is the most official source you can get. I'm sure it does, Elise Lee, but I think that the non-colored manga version is phenomenal. Damn, I'm so disappointed, dude. I thought Nico Robin was a Juan piece. But look, she's light-skinned fucking down here as a kid, too. So you can't even say the trauma of losing everything ma made her black. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. Okay. Usopp looks awesome after the time skip. I was so pumped for home to be a brave warrior of the sea after that point. He'll get there though. Yeah. Um. Okay. I was I was gonna say about like the the time skip art designs. It also the 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 main problem with the time skip art designs is that the chicks the girls got shafted and not even in the hot penis boner way. Okay, anyway, so as I was saying, the problem is that, like, the, the problem is that Oda is extremely sexist. It's a three-year time skip, okay? And everyone's, everyone's costumes, like, in some way reflect the direction they're going in terms of their strength and development. Like, you know, the injury here and Ace versus the, the sacrifice he made to overcome, fucking, like, him becoming more of a samurai, blah, blah, and Usopp becoming more of a badass. And Nami, Nami's development is their giant fucking tits get bigger, you know? Um, he loses the suit because he's like, ah, blah, blah, chopper, chopper shit. Nobody cares about chopper. I hate chopper. Nico Robin's like, what if I had bigger titties? And then I actually really don't like his design. I liked him better before he was a full fucking giant robot. You know, that's my preference. Fucking time skip. Okay, I'm closing this. Stop. I want to finish this game. Look like, out. How could you ch hate chopper? I hate chopper. Fuck you. He made Nami sexier because his wife likes her. Okay. All right.